Good evening, everyone, or should I say good afternoon, everyone. Oh, I'm in today, as you can see right in front of me, I've got a GameCube. Uh, this GameCube is not reading discs, so we're going to try and do a little bit of a pot tweak on this first. Um, I'm also going to show you how to install a Xeno GC mod chip. Uh, a lot of people out there like to run wires to the pads here. I'm going to show you that it's not really necessary to do that. It's a little bit easier than you'd think on how to install one of these directly over to the solder points that's uh, set forth on the board. So the first thing we need to do is flip this over. Um, what I'm going to do too as well is uh, on the front board here for the controller ports, there's a battery... Uh, CR2032 battery somewhere, I think over on this one or on this side, I can't remember for sure. Uh, it's soldered to the board. We're going to replace that with a button cell battery holder, just like one of these right here. This will get soldered in place as well. And we're going to kind of clean this up because you can kind of see this thing is pretty dusty, grimy, a little bit dirty. Um, I, it's just something I like to do. I'm going to end up selling this, so I want to make it look good. Even the fan cover in there is looking pretty dirty. So let's flip this over, take these off. Okay, there's nothing under there. Just making sure that like there's no bugs or anything in there. And then you need one of these little game bits. You can grab them off eBay, Amazon, AliExpress, wherever you want to. This one says 4.5 uh, millimeter. It looks like a little bit of a star kind of uh, tip right there. So you're just going to take off all four of these screws on the bottom and then the top will lift right off. because I could tell on the front two up here, these two screws, uh, they were just twisting. I'm going to open the lid first because there's a little switch in the back here and yeah, it just comes right off because the posts, as you can see, are still there. Uh, this one here and this one here. So that means that we're going to need to uh, epoxy these back into place. Now that it's off though, I can grip it, hopefully just finger tight. I'll just grip the post and try and unscrew it. Is it going to let me do it? Oh, no, it's too tight. And grab my uh, pliers or something. Here we go. Grip it with some pliers and then take these off. All right, let's bolt screws out. We'll take the front cover off like this. There's a ribbon cable that connects right behind it. Uh, try and, if you just angle it a little bit, you can get your thumb under there. If you don't want to do that, you can grab some tweezers like I've got here. And then same thing, just kind of uh, lift uh, where that bend is at. Uh, tweezer them in under there and just lift straight up. Do a little wiggle, comes right out. All right. Uh, now, back plate just comes right off just like this. Uh, the switches I were talking about earlier, you can see a little bit of fuzz on there. This is the switch that shows that a disc has been inserted, the lid's been closed, and I'll try and read from it. Um, a little bit of fuzz right there, but it's not too bad. Just grab that, comes right off. It's not too big a deal. Just a little cleany clean. I got a brush. Want to be a little bit gentle on this because I've definitely, if you try to put the, the cover on while the lid is closed, It'll hit this and break them. I've definitely broken at least one switch doing that. It's not too hard to fix. Uh, it is a really tiny board. You cannot buy these switches anywhere except from a broken GameCube that someone's parting out. So, uh, next thing we'll do the screws for the. Um, uh, actually, I don't. Leave that. We'll do the screws on the little subboard here. And then I'm gonna do the screws around the GameCube. The GameCube is interesting because it has a lot of screws holding it together. You'd think that they, you wouldn't really need a whole bunch of screws for something this small and compact, but they used like, I don't know, 15 screws to hold this board together. But I uh, just got a regular Phillips head screwdriver on my electric, uh, electric drill right here. 
I'm gonna take the two off of here and then I will take off all the screws here as well. And then I'll come right back. With the last screw taken out, this top part will just lift right off. It is a little connector that goes between the laser assembly, this top piece, to the actual motherboard right here on the edge. And then you're gonna see that we've got six more screws on this piece to take off. So let's go ahead and do that. Last of the screws taken out, piece comes apart. You'll see the laser assembly little daughter board right down here. And the part we're gonna be working on is right here. Let me zoom back down in. You'll see it says CN302. I'm gonna guess that means a connector. And if you kind of look at the board or look at these, these pads here, you can see the traces that goes with it. Let me just get you in a little bit closer. Focus. There, I'm a little bit shaky, but you can see the traces that go with it. And basically all the little pads on the center of each of the rows right there. So the three in the middle on the top, the three in the middle on the bottom, those aren't actually used for the G Xeno GC mod chip. So uh, a really easy way to make sure you don't mess this up and not have to run wires is you can actually just cut those off. Um, the pads do go to vias and there's solder points that we're connect, connect to that also go to the vias, but the pads themselves are not needed. The only ones that really matter is the pad in the top right, the pad in the top left, and the pad in the bottom left. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and do the battery mod on the uh, front board, the front uh, controller board. I've got it right here. Let's just change the camera. I'm gonna heat up the soldering iron over on the side. I've got a moderately sized tip this is my T12 soldering iron. It's a little bit dirty, hold on. There we go. Let's focus, uh, moderate size. All you really need to do with this, I'm gonna grab some leaded solder over on the, my side here. Um, actually, not even to do that yet. What you can do is if you just heat up one of the points, I'm gonna touch it to the pad, heat it up, and then push down with your finger to slide it through the hole, and the other one over here, Try not to touch yourself because this iron is incredibly hot. Heat it up and push down. This is the positive right there. So a little bit of a thinner track compared to the negative over here, which is super thick that all that copper is gonna absorb the heat. But everything came out pretty easily. This is a very nice soldering iron and tip that can go in the trash. I don't care what um, voltage it's at right now. It's not gonna be any good to me because I'd rather just use a new one. I'm looking for my soldering wick right now because I want to clean up the negative just a little bit. That wasn't really necessary, but I just wanted that a little bit cleaner as I insert. <coughs> Excuse me. Insert my button cell holder, which I appear to have lost somewhere on my bench. There it is. And if we look at the button holder compared to the battery cell that was there, uh, the tab on the bottom right there correlates to this tab on the bottom here, which means that's going to be the negative side. And then the contact on the side here correlates to the positive, which is the top. So this is gonna go in just like this. Uh, we may need to bend the legs just a little bit to get them to line up on those holes.
All right, so that's done. Uh, this is gonna go off to the side. I'm gonna clean this as well. I've noticed that sometimes, um, I've had at least a few controller ports where they're kind of dirty and crusty on the inside and washing these, get a little brush, a nice scrub on the inside helps with contacts for the controller. That's gonna go off to the side. I'm going okay, hopefully that's a good angle for you. You can see the connector uh, pads right there. So if we position the Xeno GC mod chip, uh, the Xeno mod chip, we're gonna call it that, over it, it should line up so that there's a capacitor in a little hole right here. Um, and then you'll see the two solder points in the top right corner correlate to the pads on those castellated edges. The two in the center in the top here, and there's two more that's here. So if you kind of look through it in the holes, and I pull the Xeno mod chip away, you'll see that these two top ones up here go to the two outer pads. And this one right there is going to go to the bottom left pad. Kind of see that? That's why I was saying like all these pads in the middle don't really matter. Uh, the biggest one that I've found that can be an issue and I've bridged sometimes is the one in the top right side of it. Wait for it to stop shaking. So uh, it's going to be this one. It's still shaking, sorry. It's going to be this one right here. So this is the one that I've, I've only ever had issues with. I'm pretty good. I can do it without doing this, but to show you the quick, easy way to make sure that you don't have any issues with soldering this in is just get rid of this pad. So what we can do is just a little bit of a cut because there's a trace that goes from that pad down to this via right here. So if we just cut that a little bit, put a little bit of a pressure and cut through it, take it and kind of just dig into the corner and flick up dig in the corner and flick up and eventually you'll get enough that bites and pulls it off and the reason why we cut it is so it doesn't grab into that trace itself and uh, rip down to the via so i may not have cut the nut there it goes so like i said that's usually the one that's the biggest issue right there and because uh, that could bridge to this point over here but it's gone so it's not really an issue anymore so let's go ahead and i'm going to swap out the tip on my solder and iron i want a nice thin pointy one that's going to look exactly like this uh it's a little bit dirty because i've got some solder on it but it's more of an angle tip i'll show you it once we start soldering this so let's cut to me kind of just soldering this in place Okay, this may be a little bit finicky because you're right in my face and I want to make sure you can actually see this. But if we just kind of line this up so that we can see all the pads and the solder points, we're going to start with one. Actually, let me take this back. Uh, sometimes it helps to just kind of clean up the pads because they do look a little bit crusty right now. They're a little bit oxidized. So fiberglass brush, just scrape it over that. And we should start to see that copper to come through and look a little bit brighter. Uh, it can help with the, uh, the solder flowing onto it. So you can kind of see it's getting a lot shinier now um, because that oxidation makes it more difficult for to, solder to flow. And then I'm going to grab a cotton bud and a little bit of alcohol. You can kind of see some of the fiberglass um, bristles that have kind of broken off and it's on there i definitely don't want it on my skin so just take that and we'll clean it down just a little bit better another thing i can help here too is flux uh, like i said the biggest issues are the ones that are through the holes so this one up here and this one down here so if you just add just a little bit of flux because you can very easily get to all of the other points because they're more castellated. These ones are just straight through hole. It'll make this easier. It'll make the solder flow in there easier. So now I'm gonna position it again. And just to get started, we really need one point. Once we have one point soldered, then we can use that to heat up and position the chip in a better spot. So I'm just gonna get with this one right here, try and touch the pad underneath it, as well as the pad on the Xeno GC chip. This does not have to be perfect, but I just want to make sure that they touch.
Alright, that should be good. And it is. So I can feel it not moving. And now we're just going to try and line this up. So we can kind of see that this pad down here is just a really, really far away. So we want to move it just a little bit down. But try and get it a little bit closer to the solder point on the board. So if we just do a little bit of a twist and a turn, not too much, because we also want to make sure that we can have uh, get these up here as close as we can as well. So it looks good. And just looking at the joint underneath, it's a little bit rough. I can kind of see it. I'm going to add a little bit of flux in there, right down in there. And then I'm also using 0.5 millimeter solder. Um, so it's very, very thin. And we're going to flow and go to these up these two up here as well just to create more anchor points and is this it's a little bit doesn't feel completely flat but we're just going to go ahead and get these up here That one's good as well. Just look at all of them. All of them look really, really well. And now we can do the, like I said, the two hardest ones are the ones that are through the hole. What I'm, and this is why I like this nice curved, thin tip. It's not focusing very well. I'm shaking a little bit. But what we do, just rotating it, is uh, you try and want to, you want to try and make sure that that tip touches the pad underneath it. And I'll flip this up, just a little bit of an angle try and touch the pad underneath it as well as the pad on the, and the vias on the side it flows some solder in and it should connect and we put a little flux down there i'm just wiggling it back and forth scraping against that pad underneath as well to make sure it actually flows onto it and then we'll do the one over here this one's a little bit smaller flow some solder in and scrape against the bottom it feels good and even though that that pad isn't as full or the hole isn't as full as the other, if you really wanted to, you can get some more solder down in there. Just a little bit more solder. And then make sure we're touching that pad down there. And that feels pretty good. So the next thing that we're going to do, because this one had some issues with reading discs, we're going to do a little pot tweak. Right up here, you see this little black potentiometer here. I'm going to zoom up and change position so you can see my multimeter while I do this. All right, so I've got you positioned right above me. My hand may get in the way, but what I'm going to do is take this uh, small flathead bit. I'm just going to take it into the potentiometer and rotate counterclockwise. You can see my multimeter right there is saying uh, 0.4169 kilo ohms. So it's 416, 417 ohms. I want to shoot for probably about 170 right now. Uh, I'm gonna drop it down to about maybe 170 to 200 between that range. I'll try a disc, see if it works. And then if it's good, then we'll try basically a backed up chip. Uh, we're at 181 right there. That's good enough. All right, so the parts for the GameCube, the plastic is still uh, drying right now. So once I've got those back together, I'll put it par partially back together and we'll give this a little test. So All right, a quick little cut for you, but it's the next day for me. I got the top shell cleaned up, all the pieces cleaned up and everything, uh, soap and water, let it dry. And then I was gonna cut back to me going to the next part, but I kind of remembered that I still needed to glue the posts back on. So kind of just let me show you how I do this. I use super glue and epoxy. I don't really like using super glue just to glue things. Uh, I like to use the super glue to get things started, but you can kind of see where the seam is to where, let me just flip this around, make this easier, to where it comes together right there. I will use a dab of super glue just to get the post on the spot where it needs to stay, position it correctly. And then I'll use some two-part epoxy, coat the entire out uh, outer casing or whatever, um, the entire outer post with the two-part epoxy. I do that on both sides. You can kind of see the shininess there. You need to see a little bit of a glob, uh, a lump of epoxy. 
I want to make sure that it's coating the bottom part and the part, uh, the top part of the post. That way they're kind of joined together. That's really going to offer the stability to make sure that this is nice and tight. Uh, I'm going to put this off to the side. So we're going to go back to the laser assembly here. And I've got a neat little trick for you so that you can kind of test to see if it's going to work before even putting it together. So there's two things to look for. One is how the laser acts uh, when it's seeking back and forth. The second one is kind of the intensity of the laser. I've done enough of these that I can kind of tell when it's going to work just on how bright the LED is. So it's going to look really swamped down on the camera. I'm going to turn the lights off. So we're kind of just seeing this. I'll hold down the switch back here, just gently pull back and then power it on. And you can start to see the LED. It's much, much brighter in the camera but I can tell just because of how brightly it's shining through this white label DVD here that it's working. Also the fact that it's spun up um, and then went backwards and forward kind of tells me it's seeked, it's read something and then went back to the start position. It's probably on the, spark, the, the main screen where it's saying um, start disc or it's actually launched the game. I'm not hundred percent sure right now. Another thing to look forward to, I'm gonna power this off, position the camera slightly lower zoom back out so you can see it like this and then on the front here i'm going to hold down the power or the uh, uh, disc indicator switches in the back power it on you'll see a red light down here this is from the xeno gc mod chip and then it flashes to orange this is a rev 2 chip so when it flashes to orange it tells you uh whoever's using this that has patched the main um uh the the G, uh, gamecube so the Xeno GC mod chip has worked. It's flashed the uh, chip or the uh, GameCube, so it's reading backed up disks now. So I'm so confident this is gonna work. I'm gonna go ahead and reassemble it. I'm not gonna let you stick around for it. Oh, wait, no, never mind. One thing before I reassemble, I've got one more trick for you that I like to do for the GameCubes that I work on. Back up, move this off up here. I need the buttons for the top show. Uh, I've already reassembled the controller ports and everything. CR2032 has already been installed. No worries there. I'm gonna put most of these buttons back together. So here's the reset one, slides right in. If you ever wanna take these out, they're just clipped in in the back there. That goes in. Here's the power one, uh, notches on the sides right there. This one just goes right in as well. But here is the fun one. So if you ever use the GameCube, you'll notice that sometimes the eject button, the open and close button, kind of gets a little bit stuck. So what I like to use is a spring. This thing works pretty well. I've noticed that the um, L and R buttons for the GameCube controller use a spring. And this is the exact spring that comes from one of those. It's from some third party cheap you know, cheap one that I've got for free basically because it was broken and I bought it with a lot of other GameCube controllers. And I've actually ordered springs of this size. But if you have some old third-party controllers that you don't use, they're broken, you don't want to use for anything else, the spring and the L and R buttons works perfectly. Cut it in half and then you can kind of just position it. I'll do its top side or flat side down. Position it just like that. And if you line up the power or the eject button, because uh, it it's a little bit keyed right there. You can kind of see a little notch. Just goes right in to the notches. And now whenever you click it, it's always going to come all the way up. It's not going to get stuck anymore because it has a spring pushing up on it. I've noticed some GameCubes already come with a spring, but most of them, I'd say like 80% of the ones that I've done don't have a spring. So, neat little trick there for you, just to help with the eject button, open and close button. Makes it a little bit easier. So, uh, now I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this, hook this back up to the TV, and we can see it loading uh, a game, original game, as well as a backed up disc. So, Hopefully this looks okay to you. I've got this hooked up to my TV now. I'm going to go ahead and close the lid, hit the power button, and we'll see if this works. Place your bets now. I was feeling pretty confident that it would. I've got the sound turned off, so that's no big deal. I was pretty confident, but what do you guys think? Let's just see what happens. There we go. That's what the disc is. It's action replay for GameCube. For a very specific reason, if you use the action replay disc, you can launch games using an SD card from the memory card slot, using one of those Gecko memory card adapter things, or from the little port on the very bottom. 
So it's reading this burned disk. I'm gonna go ahead and power it off because I still wanna make sure that it reads regular original games. So I've got one here uh, that I purely, I use for testing. And the reason for that, if it'll show up, it's extremely scratched up. This is a very scratched up looking disk. So if I can read this, I know this laser is good to go. I've never actually played this game. I think I've launched it. I've gotten into the actual game itself, but I've never really played it. So let's just see and make sure that it loads up and plays the Bounty Hunter game. And it is Lucas Arts. Whoops. But we can see that it is working. There it goes, loaded in the game. So it's, it's, it should have loaded a good chunk of data because it should load the actual uh, game level that we're in. So I can tell right now this is working 100% fine, no issues. Uh, the control report works, we, so we can tell it's playing backed up games, playing original games. This is a very successful um, repair as well as a mod for the original GameCube. So hopefully you all liked this video. Hopefully it was informative and beneficial for you. Uh, if you have any questions though, feel free to leave them in the comments. I usually reply to everyone that asks about things. Um, I'm just gonna close out here. Thank you all for watching. Take care and have a great rest of your day.